This is video number three of the Balance of Payments um, mini-series, which is Unit 3.3 of the IB Economics International Economics Syllabus. In this video, I'm going to explain the capital and financial accounts and their relationship to the current account. The capital account consists of two sub-accounts. The first one is capital transfers. This refers to the net monetary movement of capital goods used in the production process. Example, investment grants and debt forgiveness. When um, countries that you owe debt to forgive your debt. Um, these are all, those monetary movements of capital goods are recorded in the capital transfers sub-account of the capital account. The second sub-account of the capital account is the transactions in non-produced, non-financial assets. This refers to the exchange of money in non-produced assets. Assets that are not produced, like natural resources, for example, minerals, um, and intangible assets, assets like patents, like copyrights, like trademarks. All of these are intangible. They are non-produced and non-financial. These are the two sub-components of the capital account. This brings me to the financial account. The financial account consists of three sub-accounts. The first one is the direct investment sub-account. This refers to inflows and outflows of long-term investments in physical capital. For example, foreign ownership of domestic assets such as property or land. Um, direct investment or foreign direct investment is usually undertaken by multinational corporations, MNCs. The second sub-account of the financial account is portfolio investment or records portfolio investment. This refers to the buying and selling of stocks, shares, government bonds, pension funds, etc. So anything to do with international lending and borrowing, all of this is recorded in the portfolio investment sub-account of the financial account. The final sub-account of the financial account is the reserve assets. This refers to the government's official reserves that are held for direct financing of international payments um, and imbalances, any imbalances in those payments. And also, governments keep official reserves to affect their exchange rates in the case of buying and selling currency to influence the value of their own exchange rate. And there you have it, all three components of the balance of payments, the current account, the capital account, and the financial account. I explained the current account in a previous video. Now, what is the relationship between all um, of those three accounts? Well, basically, um, the current account should equal the capital account plus the financial account plus any net errors and omissions. In theory, the country can only spend what it earns or borrows. So if there's a deficit on the current account, this must, must somehow be financed. And it's often financed by a surplus on the capital or financial account. And that's why it's called the balance of payments. Similarly, a surplus, using the same logic, a surplus on the current account is often balanced by a deficit on the capital and financial accounts. If there's a surplus of foreign exchange, on, if there's a surplus on current account, um, this is often balanced by transferring capital overseas or produce or investing overseas or the government adding to its official reserves. So a surplus on the current account is often balanced by a deficit on the capital and financial accounts because the current account must equal the capital account plus financial account plus net errors and emissions, at least in theory. Now, the errors and emissions component of that equation is basically to represent any statistical discrepancies when compiling the accounts. In practice, it's very hard to keep a record of every single international transaction between the country and the rest of the world. So this is where net errors and emissions, um, omissions comes in. Thank you very much.